Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. Tonight, this is this is my April Fool's Day. Uh, no pranks unfortunately this year. I've been, I've just been swamped. I've been too busy. But uh, yeah, so instead of a prank, I'll give you guys a treat. Um, my coworker, uh, her son has an Oculus Quest. I have an Oculus Quest. Uh, he has been having trouble with the joysticks on his. Uh, so actually, this guy is already fixed. Um, I, I need to clean it uh, pretty thoroughly. But yeah, this is fixed. I just verified that it works. I did this off camera just to make sure I didn't destroy it because this is not my property. And I'm doing it for a friend. So I want to absolutely make sure that I did not bodge this up. So I just tested this on my Quest and the joystick works. The replacement was a success. All the buttons work. So now I'm going through it for the camera. So I have a little bit of experience and whew, uh, yeah, uh, she was, so the, the story is they bought this kit and it has replacement joysticks and whatnot and it comes with the tools and all that jazz. And uh, he was gonna try it himself. And it sounds like he doesn't have like a super lot of experience in like, you know, repair, take apart, that kind of stuff. So it, it ends up being that th it, this was definitely a smart choice uh, this is not a beginner repair. Let me repeat that. You have to be actually really dexterous and have like very precise hands and like be very knowledgeable about like how things come apart and go together. Cause this is actually like, there's many different layers. This is just, this is an onion of a repair. But anyway, we're just going to start by opening the battery cover and uh, first step is actually peeling off this sticker. I will not bore you. This took me actually quite a long uh, amount of time. I had to actually use tweezers because you can't just easily reach your finger in there. So I'm going to peel this back. There's actually uh, one screw here and then there's two inside here. So I'm going to get this peeled off just enough to gain access to those screws. I'm not going to take it off totally because we're going to stick that back down after we're done. So let me um, get to that point. And I won't bore you guys, so give me one sec. This is already off to a good start. <laughs> I tore the sticker. Uh, that's not that big of a deal, honestly. Uh, I'll just put a little tape over that. That'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, the first one already went smoother. Hopefully uh, this isn't one of those nightmare teardowns. So yeah, anyway, we got three screws here. You can see, interestingly enough, there's actually a programming port. That's how they flash the firmware on the controllers in the factory before they put the stickers on. So all these screws so far are the same length, so uh, I'm just going to pull them together. Uh, that's not the case once we start getting inside, unfortunately, though. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully she and or her son does not mind that I accidentally tore this sticker. It's, this is a very super fiddly repair. Super fiddly. Anyway, we have that portion done now. Next up is you actually are going to need a spudger of some sort. You need to get underneath this plastic disc and you, you're not gonna torque it up completely. You're not gonna try to you know pry it up from just one edge. You wanna go around the edge and there's both adhesive and little plastic pegs that friction fit. And so what we're gonna do is just keep going around until we can just evenly raise this disc up until you know all the pegs are loose. So it's easiest to just sort of start in one of the corners and uh, you have to kind of get in between. So uh, for starters, it might help to get something kind of a bit pointy. Yeah, get your finger in there, fingernail, just to make sure it doesn't go back shut and we're just, there we go. I got one clip up and then sort of working my way around. Another one up. That one's good. And you don't want to go too deep because there are like little sp springs and capacitive sensor springs and whatnot. But uh, yeah, we're going to Try to lift this up a little bit, get some purchase. There we go, it just popped off. We are going to remove this. You can see the black adhesive double sticky pad. Um, but yeah, so that's off. 
Now we have that spring I'm talking about. That's actually the capacitive sensor. Um, this part of the pad is a thumb rest and it actually can sense that because there's a piece of metal there and that touches that spring and thus it's capacitively coupled over. We have the buttons, the joystick. We can actually pull the cap off at this point. Just, uh, yeah, there we go. If the spring tries to come along for the ride, just make sure you don't keep pulling. Just use your finger to detach it just like that. You can see the joystick finally. Uh, interesting thing to note, the I believe the joystick is also capacitive. Uh, so if you just rest your finger on there, it can sense that, and that's why it has this extra little spring that's for the contact. But the actual joystick itself, uh, this is the one that I pull from the other controller. Uh, it is just a regular potentiometer based one very similar to like the nintendo switch joystick anyway we have a ton of screws here a black one here and all the rest are silver but they are slightly different lengths depending on where they're located so just keep track of that there's one two three four five six seven eight nine so there's nine screws. We are just going to proceed. Some of them are difficult because they're at an angle. So you are going to kind of need a short screwdriver. Like this one's a little hard to get to. So it sometimes helps to have like a removable bit and use a, uh, a pair of pliers to get a little bit of purchase and slowly back it out so you don't strip the screw. I'm going to try to get all of them as uh, easily as possible. So let's just do that. And while I'm doing this, uh, before I go to the speed up, I'm going to actually lay them out on this mat in the exact order they go so I know exactly how to put them back. Okay, that was a bit of a pain. And uh, so to note, the screw that goes here is the black one, as, as it's magnetized. Uh, the one that goes down here is this other long one. All the other screws are the same length with the exception of the ones that go that are tilted at the top here. These two are actually the shorter screws. So um, you don't have to worry about mixing up all the other ones. I'm pretty sure they're all the exact same length. So that's not a problem. Uh, it's just pretty much these four screws at the very bottom and the very top that you do need to keep track of. Now, okay, so we're past, <laughs> past that point. Good. Um, we are going to start, you can get your finger in there, there's just some light adhesive all the way around this ring, but we are going to pull it out, and this is actually quite easy compared to like the entire rest of the process. Um, there is just some adhesive, and we are going to see if we can just help it along. And when you get to the end, it's a little bit trickier. There's a little tab in there. You can see, let me put it back in. Uh, this little white tab, that you just need to kind of wiggle and it'll pop out of that hole. And then you can get most of it off. Um, the bottom is actually kind of tucked into the plastic there. Uh, you are going to have to like wiggle it a little bit and you'll notice that now this whole part is kind of loosey-goosey and separating from the actual handle grip part. Uh, the reason why this is seemingly stuck is there's actually like a little loop. And uh, you're going to have to wiggle that free just very carefully. Never force anything, you can break the plastics. That's no bueno. But uh, yeah, let's see. There we go. So it's a little bit annoying because this little screw post actually goes into that hole. So you have to kind of wiggle it while pulling this, try to pull it outwards, upwards towards the camera. Once it clears, uh, don't put too much force into it, but once it clears, it'll just pop right off. So we're gonna set that aside. So now we have the rest of this ring, which is actually rather interesting. Uh, all these little gray bits are like light foam blockers. The insides of those are actually IR LEDs, and that's how the Oculus cameras track the position, the exact position of this controller. You see this really complex flat flex cable that connects all those. That's very interesting. Here you can see the wireless antenna. That's pretty cool as well. You can see some hair in here. And uh, the white LED is on top there. That is a absolutely tiny, that looks like a 0402 uh, package LED. 
The IR LEDs are much larger. Those are probably 08, 05s. They look like they're maybe 06, 03s. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, we are to the part where a lot of people break the controller while in this process, uh, which is making me a little nervous, but we'll get through this. So, uh, you need to pull out this. Uh, don't yank it out right now. Just get it separated like this. You actually need to be pulling this to the, in this case, the opposite side. So, for um, this is the right controller, you need to pull it towards the left. On the left controller, you would pull it towards the right. So, basically, you hold the side with the battery bay in this hand you start separating it there's actually like a little catch down here and so you have to pull it kind of left and down at the same time and you can see it's starting to already come and there you go it pops right out uh, and that's pretty much that so we can set that aside um, so there's this flex ribbon cable that goes to the main body to here this is a second part where a lot of people end up killing the controllers um, there's a complex way, well, I actually don't know exactly. The video that I watched doesn't show how to remove this part of the grip. If you remove this part of the grip, the next part is much easier. Uh, but I'm lazy and I kind of like a challenge. So uh, deeply buried in there, uh, hopefully, I don't know if you can see, there is a ZIF connector with the other end of this ribbon. This ribbon snakes its way all the way down there and into the body. And that's what connects this entire top half of the controller to this part. And so we're going to need to actually uh, disconnect that connector. So let's see if I can even see it. Yeah, I can just about see it. So the latch, I'm going to take some tweezers. Obviously, there's no battery inserted. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, there'd be a risk of shorting. I'm going to lift the ZIF connector. I'm going to uh, go in from here and just nudge that very carefully don't poke because these tweezers are sharp and you can easily tear that connector i just gave it a little love poke uh, just to get that connector partially unseated so that when i pull this out uh, it doesn't rip that connector if you rip that connector uh, i don't even know if you can buy a replacement ones you might have to just buy a whole new controller anyway uh, so there the next part is we actually need to remove this handle there are little teeth and moldings uh, that this screw post kind of sits in and there's a couple other different places that also kind of slot in there uh, like here and then like there's some screw posts here and going through here so it's just a, a game of wiggling now and you can see I just unhooked it right there next thing that catches is the trigger and that is actually fairly easy you just sort of wiggle it and you can just sort of pull it out like that. Yay. So we're actually going to go through now and I'll show you some inter interesting things. Uh, this, I believe, is a, the vibration rumble motor. And it looks like one of the linear types, actually. And it just goes over to this connector here. And that's actually pretty interesting. This board, I mean, for how complex this ribbon cable looks, there's only a couple connectors. There's one, two, three, four, five connectors. And two of those are much thicker, so obviously that's for the battery. Two contacts for the actual battery contacts inside the uh, the plastics there. You can see one of them there. And that's all that does. And even though there's many more conductors, it's just paralleling some of those up for the higher current capabilities. Anyway, here we have uh, all these controllers are actually magnetic. They're hall-based. Uh, all these, sorry, all these uh, like trigger buttons and stuff. This is a magnet. There is a hall, chip, a hall effector chip sensor in there. And this button as well, there is a magnet here. And then a sensor, um, wherever that meets up with. The, probably this one here. And so that's how they sense a variable input. So they can sense the exact position of the triggers that way. Rather interesting. So, uh, other things, we have the main controller chip here. I'm just going to flip this latch down so I don't destroy it accidentally. Lots of test points, too. Uh, we have the main controller chip here. Uh, got lots of little ZIF connectors uh, for the ribbon for the IR. There's one on each side, so two. And we have the antenna connector. It's just one of these standard, like, SMA-type uh, doodads. Uh, we have some power management. Looks like probably an accelerometer in there as well. 
Uh, it does do dead reckoning, I believe, as well as the uh, inside-out tracking with the IR LEDs. And yeah, we have, most importantly, uh, this is the joystick that is uh, giving us trouble. So what I'm going to do is release the, uh, the ZIF connector. Just grab in here and yoink. There we go. So we have that out. Now we have one screw, two screw, three screw, four screw. So we need to remove those. Uh, these ones near the outside are easier. Uh, these ones you're going to have to play some uh, some uh, games with the screwdriver to get them in at the right angle because we're going to try not to remove this uh, trigger because it, that will be kind of more annoying than not to uh, get back in there. So, these were easy enough. This one's actually not bad either. <laughs> Stuck to the magnet. And this last one, we kind of have to get at an angle. And just go slow so you don't strip any screw heads. Luckily, they're all torques, so they're not as likely to strip out as... Uh, if, if they chose like Phillips or something else. But yeah, got all of them out without too much trouble. This is all loosey-goosey now. I'm going to lift this slightly enough to uh, actually just yoink this uh, joystick out. Now, it'll come with the, uh, the capacitive touch sensor spring. We actually need to separate that out and stick that onto the new joystick. So I'm just going to pop that down there. You can see the uh, old joystick here. Yeah, the new one. Let's just do a comparison. The new one obviously is different. <laughs> it has black plastic here, and the uh, ribbon flex is actually, you know, the, the standard flex uh, kind of goldish color. And the original stick has these little wings on the flex cable. The new one doesn't, oddly enough. And the original one has, it looks like carbonized pads. Uh, this is gold-plated on the replacement, you can see there. And yeah, the back looks a little different as well. You can see that. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to grab this. It goes in this way with the ribbon facing that away. We're going to stick this back on. There are little fingers that can grab onto either side of the screw ears. And we're just going to plop it down. Now the little ears have to go under the PCB, just so that you know. But the ribbon has to go on top of the PCB. So, once again, it's going to take a little finagling. Because nothing can ever be simple. And when I say a little finagling, apparently it's going to take a lot of finagling. Because, because Murphy, why not? There we go, have it down, make sure the buttons didn't pop up, that they're seated correctly. Yeah, they're good. Now we're just going to pop those four screws back in. So now we're just going to check that all the buttons still click, none of them are like stuck. New joystick, wiggle waggles, and there, we're good to go. Now uh, we just reverse everything, which uh, for a couple of the things are easier said than done. So we need to fit this ribbon back in. Uh, like I said, this would be a hell of a lot easier if you figured out how to remove this backside grip. But I'm too lazy, but in a bad way. So I'm just going to hard mode it. So we're going to get this resituated in here. Just kind of flip it in like that. And uh, this part is hell. Uh, we're going to make sure that this latch is up, that the ribbon fits into. And I am going to play a game of I Hate My Life. Um, so we're going to get this mostly fitted into the, uh, the mating screw post here. And get this kind of lined up, but not exactly all the way. And uh, with my tweezers, I'm going to grab it and start feeding it into that ZIF connector. I know this is really hard to see. I'm sorry. There's no easy way. Once you can get most of the way in, just force the uh, you know this post back in flush, and now the connector will be actually pushed in automatically just because of how it's located. 
And I'm going to flip down this locking bar if I can. And there we go. I made it look really easy. I did this once before, exactly one time before, uh, but I was able to do it. So <laughs> anyway, I think that's like pretty much the hardest part done now. Uh, next, so kind of annoyingly, uh, we need to get this through around this post here and kind of situated up in there, uh, which is uh, on the other controller when I did it, it was a pain. Uh, hopefully with a little extra practice. Yeah, I just did it. <laughs> that was a lot easier than the first time I did it. Wow. Okay. Now we are going to just reverse, uh, putting this back together, which was just pretty much a rule of thumb wiggle waggle. Just wiggle pieces of plastic a little bit and they just slid back into place. Okay. That was easy. So now... Uh, we can put on the thumbstick. There's a little flat in the plastic you might be able to see. And the joystick is flat on the top and the bottom. If it doesn't fit, you might have to wiggle the joystick a little bit. But it will it should fit on really easily. Because it really only goes on in two directions um, because of those two flat spots. Now we're going to situate the touch pad, which is like that little circle of black, different texture plastic on this spring and stick the joystick through this hole. And, oh, why am I doing this? I have to screw in all the screws first. <laughs> okay, it's been a long day. So I'm gonna get this one long screw in first because it one's very easy. I'm going to, actually, let me think about this. Get this one in. And before I get too much further, so those two longer screws are actually what screw into this bottom point and these two points here. And that screws this top portion to this bottom. Uh, before I get too far, I'm just going to throw this on because this I foresee as being a slight annoyance getting it situated uh, once I have too many screws in. So I'm just going to fit it in and then... This has to kind of fit in. Oh, opposite way. <laughs> so, you need to get the part with the key, the little piece of plastic, in first, and then work around in the other direction. There you go. See, when you take apart and put things together in the right order, it goes together much easier than when you try to do it in the wrong order. So yeah, um, why do I keep trying to put that piece back in? Now I need to get all the screws in. <laughs> okay. And so before I forget the two slightly shorter screws at the front, I'm just going to go ahead and whack them on now so I don't forget and uh, screw things up, pun intended. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Now I can put this pad back on. Good. Just get it lined up and then you push until it's flush pretty much all around. Check that all the buttons are still pressed now. And uh, we are almost done. Now it's just three more screws and we're home free. Well, home free, I have to actually test this. I have to pair this with my controller and I'll show you how to do that in a sec. It's kind of annoying. Apparently, you need the MetaQuest app uh, in order to to pair new controllers. You can't just do it with the console itself. Uh, but I'll show you how to put the controller in pairing mode, and then you actually need to go into the app and into settings and uh, controllers, and then uh, add new controller, pair new controller, something like that. I feel really bad. I, I mangled this sticker. Uh, I The other one I got off perfectly in one piece without any damage. And this one, just sweaty hands, I guess. That sucks. Super sorry about that. Uh, anyway, at this point, we can 
stick this back on in a way that uh, preferably kind of isn't sucky. Yeah, I'm probably just going to throw a thin piece of tape around on here just to make sure that uh, it at least doesn't pop up. Uh, I'm going to grab the battery, and here's the power test. Make sure that uh, this did not blow up. Uh, we can press this. It does turn on, so that's a good sign. Okay, so to put it into pairing mode, you press and hold. Uh, I believe it's like these two buttons. Uh, and you have to hold it for a couple seconds while you are in the app uh, telling it to pair it to a new device. So I'm just going to go here. I already paired this, so that works. Uh, so from the home screen of the app, menu, devices, uh, controllers, pair new controller. This is the right. Now I press and hold these two, and it just rumbled like three times, and it's beeping or blinking. Okay, so I had to do it again. I had to open the app and close it and open it. It's a bug probably, and I did the exact same process, and the blinking light stopped, and it rumbled for like two seconds, and then now we're good. Now I have uh, it paired. So now uh, let's just test out if this works. Uh, you won't be able to see this because it's a VR headset. So I'll be back in a sec with a uh, with a yay or a nay. I'm a complete idiot. Uh, I reassembled this completely without remembering to plug in the the ZIF connector for the joystick. So I, this needs to come completely apart and I will get back to that point and show you guys me plugging in that ZIF connector. Then I will put it all back together and test again. Uh, give me one second. I hate my life. And we're back. Uh, I hate my life. I'm going to get this stupid ribbon in there. Why didn't I just do this when I was already inside? Why did I forget? I just wasted like half an hour of my, my pointless life. Okay, now it's in there. Ribbon's in there. I'm just going to reassemble all of this again. Another like... 10 minutes of my life wasted. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back and it is a yay. Both controllers work 100%. I tested out the new joysticks. I tested every button. They all work. They're good. Uh, with the exception of the fact that I, uh, I massacred this sticker. But a little tape will fix that. That's, uh, yeah, it's seen better days. If that's the only thing that I damaged in this entire thing, none of the ribbons, none of the plastic, uh... Yeah, I'd say that that's a pretty good uh, ending. In the end, though, uh, Murphy got me with the uh, stupid um, forgetting to plug in this joystick and putting it all back together and having to take everything apart again. So, in the end, yeah, uh, it's April Fool's. Murphy got me, haha. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, these are good to go. I'm going to go through and scrub all the detritus, and I'm going to wash my hands. Uh, yeah, generally, if you're going to do something with controllers, I'd suggest wearing gloves. But uh, this was a pain in the butt to work with. With gloves, it would have dri driven me insane. So I'm willing to accept getting dead skin finger cheese. I really got to clean off my place mat now. That's kind of disgusting. I'm going to soak my hands in alcohol uh, because after this, um, yeah, this is something that it's definitely doable. But like I said, uh, if you're a beginner and you have a pair of controllers that need new joysticks, just send them to someone who knows how to work on this kind of stuff. 100% uh, if I did not have the experience that I have, I would have butchered and destroyed these controllers and ended up having to buy new ones anyway. So yeah, uh, for for the most part, I'd suggest DIY, but if you don't have the experience, this is this is a massive learning curve to, to get into these without destroying anything. So I would highly suggest uh, practicing on some other stuff first. But yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this was the first time I actually had to open these up, and I would say after having to, like, 
undo and redo the tear down portion and the reassembly portion multiple times because of my dumbass mistake. Uh, I can pretty safely say that I am a pro at this now. And uh, yeah, I have no fears if I ever need to replace the joysticks on mine. I absolutely could do it. It's, it's actually definitely doable for someone uh, with a little bit of repair skills. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.